Uh, good evening. My name is Henry Marcus. Uh, I'm with my associate here. Hi, I'm Ben Wendell. Uh, we're the head of the Milwaukee Bucks marketing department. Uh, I'd like to thank all the members of the front office uh, for joining us here. Uh, we're here tonight to discuss the potential uh, international expansion of the Milwaukee Bucks brand. Quick rundown of what we're going to go through tonight. Uh, we're going to start with uh, background, first on the Milwaukee Bucks, and then on Greece. Uh, we're going to move on to the political structure, uh, technology, hosting potential, uh, labor law, and state of the media, all as it pertains to Greece. And then we're going to get into uh, our marketing plan and creative strategies. Yeah, so we're going to start by talking about Wisconsin and then Milwaukee in particular, which is where the Bucks are located. Uh, Wisconsin's actually the 20th largest state in the United States, and Milwaukee is the largest city in Wisconsin with about 600,000 residents. Uh, as many of you know, it's known as a beer town. It's actually called Beer Town USA. Um, a lot of that has to do with Miller Coors uh, headquartered there. Um, which is one of the biggest beer um, labels in the world, um, but also because of their large amount of uh, beer drinkers as well. Um, it actually has the largest percentage per capita of binge drinkers in America, which is a pretty impressive stat. Um, as far as basketball goes, uh, Milwaukee is actually the fourth smallest market in the NBA. Um, it's only smaller behind New Orleans, Memphis, and Oklahoma City. Uh, the franchise was founded in 1968, and it was actually the fastest franchise to ever win a NBA title. Uh, they won the NBA title in 1971, and that team actually featured uh, Oscar Robertson as well as Lou Alcindor, otherwise known as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, so they were really talented. Um, unfortunately, the Bucks have only had moderate success since then. Uh, only reaching the NBA championship twice in the franchise's history. Um, the franchise is on the upswing though, and that started with a change of ownership. Uh, Herb Cole, who owned the team for a really long time, over 20 years, uh, sold the team to Mark Lazary and Wes Edens, and with the new ownership group, there really became a big spark in the uh, city, and the really the high interest, um, high raise in the level of interest in the Bucks franchise. Um, with that new ownership group, there was actually a deal that came through as well that they had to um, build a new stadium for the Milwaukee Bucks. And so with that stadium, they're planning on building a world-class sports and entertainment district. And that district is planning to revitalize the downtown Milwaukee community. Um, they're also pretty excited about an um, up and rising team, and that starts with the coaching staff. Uh, Jason Kidd is one of the youngest coaches head coaches in the NBA. Uh, and he's had success with the Brooklyn Nets as well as the Milwaukee Bucks. He actually was able to bring the Milwaukee Bucks to the playoffs two years ago, which was his first season with the team. Uh, while they missed out on the playoffs last season, they're really looking forward to uh, potential um, growth in the team. And that starts with their young and talented roster. Uh, they're actually the youngest roster in the NBA and the youngest starting five in the NBA. Their oldest starting five member was actually Greg Monroe last season, and he was only 26 years old. Uh, so there's a lot of bright, um, bright optimization and potential for this uh, team moving forward. Uh, and really the centerpiece in that young core group for the Milwaukee Bucks is Giannis Antetokounmpo. Uh, he was the 15th pick in the 2013 first round, and he is born in Greece. Uh, he's one of only eight people to actually be born in Greece and then play in the NBA. Uh, and he had a, a really standout season this past season. Uh, he had high praise from the likes of Kobe Bryant. And he actually participated in the 2015-2016 dunk contest. So he was part of the all-star festivities. And so Henry and uh, my plan is to capitalize on Giannis's, uh great talent as well as marketability in expanding the Bucks brand outside of Milwaukee and Wisconsin. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the role of sport in Greece, uh, starting with ancient Greece. Uh, exercise and sport have always been very important to Greek people uh, for health, lifestyle, and military purposes. 
Uh, they felt that a, a healthy body was, was absolutely essential. Uh, they had public gyms everywhere, even in ancient times. Uh, most people played some kind of sport or exercise every day to keep their body fit. Uh, they also saw it as kind of uh, preparation for warfare as well and a great way for their soldiers uh, to stay physically fit. Um, they held national sport festivals uh, in ancient Greece, four in particular, the biggest, oldest, and most popular of which was held in Olympia, hence the name the Olympics. Uh, this was to honor the most important of their gods, uh, who was Zeus. They actually sacrificed grain, wine, and even lambs uh, to honor Zeus. Uh, and the first Olympics on record took place in 776 BC. Um, in those times, the Olympic Games uh, were much simpler uh, than they are now with only a handful of games uh, in competition, uh, namely boxing, equestrian events, running, wrestling, pentathlon, and pancration. Um, which was kind of like a barbaric form of wrestling. Um, unfortunately, the Olympic Games were banned uh, in the fourth, uh, fourth century by the new Roman Christian Empire. They saw the Olympics as a pagan, sorry, a pagan ritual, uh, and as such, they wanted to do away with that. Uh, of course, the Olympics did return in modern times in 1896, thanks to a Frenchman named Pierre de Coubertin, uh, who sought to kind of revitalize and revive uh, the rich tradition of the Olympics. Um, it is worth mentioning that Greece is one of only two countries to participate in every single modern Olympics since that uh, first one in Athens, once again, in 1896. Uh, the role of basketball in Greece. Uh, Greece was actually one of FIBA's eight founding members back in 1932. Uh, so they're really a part of the rich history uh, of basketball, especially in the international sphere. Uh, they were Eurobasket champions in, uh, I'm sorry, 1987, uh, which really went a long way to cultivate that interest and passion for the sport of basketball. Uh, they also won in 2005 and were runner-ups the following year in 2006, uh, where they actually knocked the US out of international competition. And I believe that was the last time the US men's uh, international team actually lost uh, a game. Coach K was quoted as saying that the Greeks actually taught them how to play internationally. Um, they've fallen back a bit. They're currently ranked 10th. Uh, an international basketball competition, but obviously still highly competitive and still amongst the top uh, international competitors. Um, Greek politics. So the structure of the government uh, is actually dictated by the Greek constitution, which was last amended in 2008. Um, it's known as a presidential parliamentary republic, which is comparable, comparable to Western uh, democracies, such as Germany's. Um, it comprises of the president, who is appoint appointed by parliament every five years. He's known as head of state. His powers are primarily ceremonial, uh, including things like declaring war, reaching peace agreements, and representing the country in international meetings. Uh, however, every major decision the president makes must be co-signed by the cabinet themselves. We also have the prime minister, who is directly appointed by the president. He's known as the head of government. Uh, the prime minister and the cabinet are responsible for uh, setting domestic and international policy. Uh, so in essence, the prime minister actually holds more power uh, than the president in their current political structure. Um, we can't talk about Greece without touching on the economic instability. Obviously, that's a major concern. Their debt, uh, by many accounts, is up to about $320 billion. Uh, I'm sorry, a billion euros, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, some would contend that they're now moving in the right direction as of the last year or so, um, but nonetheless, they still dug themselves a massive hole. Uh, as of 2010, all government decisions must be posted online. 
Uh, and this is an effort to kind of create more transparency uh, between the government and the people of Greece. So something to consider uh, when trying to move the Milwaukee Bucks brand into Greece is the state of technology in the country. And unfortunately for a first world country, uh, Tech, or Greece is relatively behind in the techno technological sphere. Um, one big reason for this is the uh, resistance to change among the Greek community. They really like the status quo and like sticking to what they know. And so uh, once they get older, they really aren't um, really susceptible to change, which is an uh, issue when it comes to technology. Um, and another issue is that the younger generation of the Greek community is um, beginning to leave the country more and more often. And as you can imagine, the younger generation is a lot more tech savvy than the older generation. And so when they leave the country, it really leaves this older generation that's not too tech, sal tech savvy to uh, um, really use all the new technologies and stuff like that. And so while Greece uh, it has TVs and different magazines and radio and stuff like that. They're really far behind as far as internet and this, you know, in particular social media. And while they're behind in technology, they definitely have enough of a big sports platform to be able to host the Milwaukee Bucks um, during the off season. And so, as Henry touched on, they have a history of um, hosting Olympic Games, and the last time they did so was in 2004. They also had this Panathenic Stadium, which is uh, very well renowned across the world, and so the opportunity for the Milwaukee Bucks to have a presence in such a well regarded stadium um, would be a great opportunity to really market the brand. Uh, Greece also has a premier soccer or football league, as well as four professional basketball leagues. Uh, and the basketball leagues are really high renowned uh, leagues throughout the world, especially the A1 tier. Um, and lots of people consider it some of the most competitive basketball in the world. Um, another place that has the potential to host the Milwaukee Back Bucks team is uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo's training facility. Uh, him and his brothers own facilities not only in Milwaukee but also in Greece. And so it's a great place where the Bucks could be able to host uh, scrimmage games or skills camps. And it really would have a family atmosphere with uh, Giannis uh, owning the facility. Uh, let's talk about labor regulations in Greece. Uh, generally speaking, the labor laws are pretty favorable towards the workforce. Uh, for example, they have a maximum 40-hour work week, a uh, pretty reasonable minimum wage, uh, enough to provide for your family, um, at least within the Greek economy. Um, they have paid vacations, sick days, unemployment benefits, things of that nature. The government also uh, goes pretty far to protect the rights of the workforce as they um, allow them to unionize, strike, and even collectively bargain. Um, there's also heavily regulated industrial health and safety laws. Uh, child labor is strictly prohibited. Anybody under the age of 12 cannot hold any kind of job. Anybody under, under the age of 15 cannot hold any kind of industrial job. Uh, women are well protected in the workplace as well with things like uh, gender discrimination laws, equal pay requirements, and mandated maternity leave. Um, again, going back to the economic instability in Greece, uh, their unemployment rate is uh, pretty alarming to say the least. Uh, in 2015, their unemployment rate was over 25% or one in four. Uh, especially alarming when you compare that to the average in the EU, which is just under 10%. Uh, the state of the Greek media, um, after the return of democracy in the 70s, uh, there was a massive proliferation of different media outlets, uh, particularly print media, um, and with that came increased freedom of speech, which is actually uh, guaranteed in the Greek constitution. Uh, most media, like, TV, magazines, newspapers, and things like that rely on two primary sources of income. One is state funding, and two would be uh, advertising-based uh, revenue streams. Uh, newspaper, as I mentioned, was the primary uh, source of news and media uh, for decades, but in the late 90s, it started to give way more so to TV, uh, TV media and news is now 
by far the number one source uh, with about 99% of households in Greece uh, actually having a TV. Um, they continue to operate in the Western media model um, and we really believe this provides a lot of opportunities and channels uh, for the Milwaukee Bucks to gain some of this international exposure uh, that we're looking for. So our goal is to increase the Milwaukee Bucks presence internationally and we think the great avenue to do so is Greece uh, with Giannis being one of our star players. Uh, the way we plan on doing so is through a sponsorship agreement with a Greek company and the Greek company that we have targeted for the sponsorship agreement is Mythos Brewing Company. So Mythos was founded in 1997 and has gained uh, popularity traction very quickly. Um, it's actually the most successful uh, and most bought brand, uh, beer brand in Greece. Um, as far as Greece beers go, it's actually the most successful internationally as well. Um, so we've got a bunch of awards uh, in Greece and throughout the European Union. And its motto is, uh, myth is everywhere. And we thought that myth really uh, stayed on brand with the Milwaukee Bucks and in particular Giannis. Uh, he's kind of this mythological creature uh, to Greek citizens, and so for him to be uh, featured with the motto like myth is everywhere really made sense to us. Uh, so like I said, a sponsorship agreement with the Milwaukee Bucks and Mythos Brewing Company, and we plan on uh, activating this sponsorship through different uh, mediums such as advertising, merchandise, product branding, player appearances, team camps or appearances, and uh, signage at the Bucks New uh, Stadium. And so uh, it being a brand new facility, it's not gonna have, it has much more uh, flexibility as far as where we can put signage. And with Mythos being a new brand in a, in a society where beer is extremely popular, we wanted to get the uh, awareness up of Mythos. And so we thought the best way to do so was through uh, prime uh, uh, signage in the new Bucks Arena. Okay, so here's some other creative strategies to kind of uh, help us achieve our marketing objectives. Um, again, we're really trying to foster this brand connection, and what better way to do that than to directly expose the Greek people uh, to our product. Now, how can we do that? One way would be to directly broadcast Milwaukee Bucks games uh, in Greece. Now, which channels could we do that through? OTE Sport, for example, is one of the biggest broadcasting companies in Greece, they already broadcast NBA games as it is. Not so many Milwaukee Bucks games, unfortunately, um, but we feel there's a lot of potential uh, to broker some kind of agreement there. Uh, Filmnet pay-per-view. Uh, it was a premium pay-per-view channel all across Europe. Um, a service like this would be an excellent option uh, to help get our product out there in in Greece as well as Europe um, through this pay-per-view channel. Uh, and there's also the option of digital streaming. Again, Ben touched on the kind of limitations of uh, the technology in Greece, but again, the potential is there. The NBA just reached uh, a very lucrative deal with a Chinese company uh, known as Tenzin. Again, a digital streaming agreement. Um, we don't project that an agreement with a Greek company would be anywhere near as lucrative as the 700 million um, that the NBA got from Tenzin, but still, uh, the model is laid out for us. Some other potential um, ways to show off our product, even in a more personal way, uh, preseason NBA games in Greece. Um, we've done it before, the NBA commonly likes to hold international, um, I shouldn't say commonly, at times has done it. Uh, we feel that this would be a really great opportunity uh, to kind of showcase our brand and our product uh, in person. And something like uh, some of the historical venues that Ben touched on would be uh, a perfect venue uh, for this kind of showcase. Similarly, uh, friendly international FIBA competitions, uh, we'd like to, again, just to foster the development of the love of basketball and the interest of basketball in Greece, We'd like to encourage more uh, friendly international competitions, um, especially with U.S. partaking. The U.S. doesn't traditionally take part uh, in the friendly matches. Uh, 
And lastly would be an NBA partnership with the GBL, which is the Greek Basket League, uh, the top tier professional league in Greece. Uh, very much like the NBA had just partnered with the top tier league in Brazil. Um, this partnership would be, again, focused on fostering the development of the sport in Greece. They already know the game, uh, there's a lot of interest in it, but through this partnership we can kind of, from a marketing standpoint, from a business standpoint, uh, really help develop these channels. Uh, and also, events like this, the Basketball Fest. Uh, this kind of event would be held in Greece, uh, potentially hosted by Giannis himself or other Bucks players, and uh, this is aimed at achieving direct fan engagement, right? Uh, something like this would essentially be a skills clinic for kids, uh, a family-focused event where people can come out and really um, get this one-on-one -on -one brand connection. Another way to market a Milwaukee Bucks sponsorship with a Greek company like Mythos would be through merchandise. Uh, being able to co-brand on merchandise, whether it's t-shirts, jerseys, uh, backpacks, sweatpants, really any uh, type of merchandise that basketball fans tend to buy. It would be a great way to advertise um, the Milwaukee Bucks in Greece as well as advertise Mythos in America. Um, and then also we thought capitalizing with the merchandise on the, uh, the um, slogan that Mythos has and how it kind of uh, pertains to um, Bucks basketball as well as um, Giannis as a player with the myth is everywhere, throw those on the t-shirts and then also the uh, hashtag on the future which is the slogan for the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, another way to do so is through product branding. Uh, like I said, Mythos is the most successful brewing company in Greece, and so for the Milwaukee Bucks to have the opportunity to put their logo on the uh, bottle or the can for Mythos would be a great opportunity to get some brand exposure in Greece. Um, they also have, Mythos has this new cooling and cooler technology, and so that's something that would stay behind the bars or in the homes of uh, Greek, uh, the Greek community. And so being able to have the logo on something that's going to be seen very often would help keep the Milwaukee Bucks top of mind for the Greek um, citizens. Another way to do so is through advertisements featuring Giannis, uh, whether it's print or uh, television or radio advertisements. Um, Giannis is probably the most uh, popular professional athlete out of Greece. Um, right now, and so having him and the most popular beer together would really uh, drive some successful advertising campaigns, we believe. Uh, so let's kind of recap our, our marketing plan, everything we've laid out for you uh, with a SWOT analysis. Starting with the internal strengths and weaknesses, uh, firstly is Giannis himself. Obviously, he's a very crucial component to this marketing campaign. Uh, he's a very valuable asset, obviously going to be a strength here. Um, again, as Ben touched on, the youthful nature of our, of our roster as well as our coaching staff. Again, a strength, there's a lot of excitement uh, around our team going forward. Um, we're a top tier NBA product. As in professional basketball, it doesn't really get any better than the NBA. Um, we know that, we just really want to get our product out there internationally. Uh, also, knowledge of international expansion. Um, we can kind of use the blueprint that teams like the Houston Rockets have done with Yao Ming and the Chinese market. Um, we'd like to kind of use this valuable information as we're not necessarily going to follow the exact same steps, but it's very valuable information nonetheless. Uh, some weaknesses, just as Giannis was a strength, uh, he's a player, players leave, we know that. Um, we would really like to keep Giannis uh, long term. We'd like him to be a career long buck, but um, there's always the potential for people to leave, obviously. Um, another weakness would be the overcrowding of the beverage uh, sponsor category. We don't want to upset any of our sponsors. Uh, we do feel that Mythos uh, aligns really well with uh, the demographic that we're trying to target and uh, what we're trying to do uh, with our marketing campaign. Um, but at the very worst case, we could find another potential sponsor, uh, but there is the overcrowding issue. Um, also, 
a lack of international brand presence. Uh, the Bucks are a very strong brand within the state of Wisconsin, not so much internationally, but obviously that's uh, part of why we're doing this campaign in the first place. Uh, opportunities, obviously to add new revenue streams is always a positive. Uh, we'd like to capitalize on the presence of basketball in Greece. We're not starting from ground zero. Uh, we're really just trying to build on the foundation uh, that the Greek people already have for their love of basketball. Uh, again, an opportunity to bring the Bucks brand internationally um, and also the growth potential in the Greek media and the economy. Um, they're kind of behind the times in both cases, but we feel there's a lot of room for improvement there. As for threats, the volatile nature of the Greek economy, a huge risk, obviously going to be a threat. Um, the relatively low ranking of the Greek media, when, especially compared to other European countries, um, again, a lot of work to do there. And of course, whenever you're talking about massive European organizations, there's the issue of corruption. Um, so just something to note there moving forward. So that's all we have for you guys tonight. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to contact here. Um, ben, would you like to add anything? This was a great presence to be able to talk about how the Milwaukee Bucks could expand their uh, brand internationally, and we both believe that Greece uh, provides them a great opportunity to do so. So thank you very much. Thank you.